Hey guys, so it's about that time again and if you're not going back to school then I'm pretty sure you're going to have to write down something at some point. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make your very own custom notebooks. And the first thing we're going to do is measure out the cover. So the dimensions that I'm using I will put below in the down bar. I made actually a few sizes but really you can do whatever you want. But to make it a little swanky we're actually going to add some pockets. So to do that I'm going to add an extra 3 inches to the bottom. And keep in mind my notebook is pretty skinny because this is going to be an insert in my Fodori. So again feel free to customize the number. And I'm also going to do a, another pocket just to give you guys a few more options. Then we're ready to cut. So if you're using a cutting mat like I am, I highly recommend a metal ruler. As a matter of fact, I insist. But first, we're going to score our lines. And to do that, I'm using an awl. But you can easily use anything to substitute it. And then I'm going to grab a craft knife to cut out the cover. And the reason you want to use a metal ruler is because you don't want to accidentally cut through your ruler. So you really need something metal to basically butt up against the blade. Next, we're going to fold in our pockets. And as you can see, I basically use anything that's nearby. But traditionally, you would use a bone folder. So if you have one, this would be the perfect time to take it out. And as a final touch, I'm just going to notch the pocket because I find this a little bit easier to get things in and out of. And to actually seal it, you just want to run some adhesive, even some double-sided tape along the edge. Next, we're going to crease the center by folding our cover in half. You can actually do this now or later, but I find it easier to do now. Again, a bone folder would pretty much come in handy right now, but I'm just going to use whatever's on my desk. Don't worry guys, we're halfway there. I'm just going to round the corners and then we're going to move on to the next step. This part is completely optional, but I'm actually taking a piece of transparency, which is going to come in handy at the end of this video. You want to cut this to the same size as your book, minus a quarter of an inch for the sides. And the same thing goes for your paper. You're going to center all of this on top of your cover, making sure that you leave that little bit of a gap on each side and then clip everything in position. This will keep your paper stable for the next step. I actually even recommend that you use bulldog clips but this is what I have on hand. So going back in with a ruler and an awl you're going to put holes into your cover going about every half of an inch. Make sure that you're going all the way through to the other side and if you don't have an awl just use a thumbtack. Now to bring all of this together, we're going to actually sew the spine of our book. So we're going to be doing a saddle stitch using some embroidery floss. Starting from the middle, you first want to leave a bit of a tail and then do a running stitch. This is going to seem like it's leaving a gap, but once you reach the end, we're going to actually go backwards and this is going to fill in those empty spaces. So going into the previous hole that you stitched before, you're going to run your running stitch the opposite direction. When you get to the middle, just keep going. Go all the way to the end and then come back until you reach the center again. So as you can see, I do have an empty space, so I could go back to the outside, but I'm just going to tie things off. So I do a double knot. And do make sure this is very secure. Trust me, you don't want it to come loose. So afterwards, I'm going to actually tuck my threads underneath my previous stitches before I trim, just in case. When you're done, fold your cover backwards and your papers in the opposite direction. Again, you can use a bone folder and you can call it quits. But I'm going to add a personal touch by rounding my corners. And to do that, I'm going to use a corner chopper because it makes my life easier. Now you'll notice that when you bring your book back together, it doesn't really want to stay close. So the final step is actually to press your book. So apply something heavy and forget about it. So you probably had fun picking out the paper for your book, but now the fun really begins. Because now you get to stuff your folders and pockets with all of your fun stickers and photos. And remember that transparency? Well, we're actually going to use this as a dashboard, which means that basically you can put all of your sticky notes and memos to use later. And this way you don't bulk up your bag or purse with supplies. Even if you don't want to keep sticky notes here, you can leave yourself a memo for if you have an appointment or an assignment that's due later. And you can remove it easily. You can also forget about folders. You've got plenty of room to hold to-do lists, note cards, and even more stickers. You can even carry around your favorite washi tape. Just wrap it around an old gift card. Neon colors are my favorite because you can use them like highlighters, plus they make good headers to grab your attention quickly. And don't be afraid to decorate your covers. I actually like to use my notebooks for several different things, so I have one for each. You can use these for sketching, journaling, traveling, even a daily agenda and calendar. So take this opportunity to represent each of those themes on the cover. One of my favorite things to do is also stamp. So much so, I even took it upon myself to make my own. Basically, I only needed a few letters, so I didn't want to buy an entire alphabet. And I was thinking of doing a video on these, so if you guys do want to know how to make your own stamps, just let me know in the comments. Now, if your paper wasn't large enough to add pockets, then don't worry, you can just add them later. One of my favorite ways to do that is to use glassine or paper bags. You can just glue them into the cover, and they're great for keeping receipts. Alright guys, now we're really done. If you want me to make more videos like this, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to sub if you aren't already.